that it's very difficult to achieve that purpose without sweeping up, casting too broad a net. Have you got any thoughts about that? Have your members discussed this? Um, we have lots of thought about this because this is the section of the bill that we spend a lot of time thinking about. Mm. And, you know, with all of this stuff, I wish I could come to you and say, I have the magic answer, but mm. we know yeah, that's that what it's, That's what yeah. I was hoping you'd provide. And it's, it's really complicated. And I also understand your situation of being in complicated situations and, and there's not a, a simple, easy answer. And we absolutely agree with you that we don't, we aren't in the interest of trying to protect people so they can give dangerous drugs to, to young people. That's absolutely not our intention at all. And in terms of the language, um, even if it was something specified, and I think this has been talked about by other people who've talked to you as well, even the, in the last panel of are we talking about a, you know, an elementary school, are we talking about a high school or a university, even things like that would make it uh, more precise. And I've also heard talking about specific distances that might be more useful because the language of on or near, especially the on or near the schoolyard, but as well in that section you also have anywhere known to be frequented by people under the age of 18. Mm -hmm is extremely broad, where really that could be, that can be anywhere, really. It can be Parliament Hill because we have, you know, young people come to Parliament Hill and, and meet with MPs and, and go on the hill as well. So our concern is absolutely the, you know, sweeping up of people and unintentionally. I, re I don't think it's intentional, you know, or that anyone on this table is trying to intentionally sweep up a bunch of people under 25 and put them in jail. Uh, I don't think that. It's just that we, because we are a group of young people and we're young people across the country, we have these experiences where we can see how this would happen. And we often see, you know, there's with, you know, a, someone who's a closer age, but yes, you know, like a 19-year-old with a 17-year-old or something. That, and that may occur in a, you know, a mall, for example, that we would ask for more precise language. I'm not a legal expert, per se, so I don't know, I can't give you the best legal answer. Does that make sense at all? Sure. I yeah. mean, uh, you're obviously, uh, you and your members have been grappling with the same questions everybody else Exactly. Has. Um, Ms. Anderson, did you want to think about that? Um, I do have a couple of comments. Um, one thing, I, I understand the differences between elementary high and, and, mm -hmm. and um, university and, and things like that. And I, uh, my comment is one of the things that we've done in the Yukon is we've introduced a drug dog into one of the schools, and it was a school that my niece went to. And my niece felt so much more secure at school because this dog was there. Was it there on a regular basis? Forgive it was, me for yeah. Mm. Yeah, and it was, it's a pilot program mm -hmm. just to see how, um, you know, the students reacted, the parents reacted, all that. Um, I don't have statistics on it. I can't tell you if it's extremely successful. All I can tell you is that my niece felt a lot more comfortable at school knowing that these dogs were there. Okay, thank you. Thank you both uh, very much. Oh, Senator Wallace is back on the list. You're not free yet. Senator Wallace. Uh, Mrs. Anderson, um, just on um, this, this, uh, the, the issue of uh, schools and the impact of drugs in schools, and uh, it's difficult to even ask you a question because I know it's, all of this is so uh, obviously personal to you. Um, that obviously is a major focus of the bill. It's a concern the minister has. It's a concern that all of us have around this table. Uh, is to um, protect our children and uh, from the problems of drugs, and in particular at a school. A school is this, this is where they go to go to the next level to, to move through life and to get what they need in a positive way, and not run into uh, the uh, the issues of drug trafficking that uh, seem to be prevalent. The intention is there. There's, I guess we'll have debate on how do we deal with that. Is there one magic answer that's going to solve it? No, probably not. The feeling of the government is that this is a step in the right direction. It sends out uh, real consequences. It's an overworked expression, but it does send out strong messages that schools have got to be out of bounds as much as we can cause that to happen uh, in the trafficking of drugs. 
And I'm just wondering from, if there's anything more you would care to add about your own experience or knowledge about drugs in schools and the negative impact uh, that uh, you've experienced or your friends have experienced uh, in, in, that, in that way. Um, the school that my children attended, um, it, there wasn't that problem. Um, it, was not, it was not? No. Um, not that it came to light, you know, um, I imagine if I go home and my son will say, oh yeah, you know, but as a parent I was never told that there was any kind of problem on that particular school ground. Um, with that said, in some of the other schools, um, it's public knowledge that there was some problems. Um, as a parent, I think that when I send my children to school, I have an expectation that the people at the school are going to keep my children safe, be it from drugs, be it from violence, be it from whatever. Um, it's a learning institution. Um, sometimes school is a refuge for children, you know, because their lives at home may not be stable, and this is one thing that is stable in their life. Um, I, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, I think schools are, are you know, especially when it comes to the, the younger levels, elementary and high school, I think we need to do whatever we can to protect our children there. That should be a safe haven for them. Just let me ask if Ms. Ryans wants to comment on that. Well, like I said, we absolutely want you know, the schools to be, be kept safe, of course. Um, I think it's different when we're looking at university and, and college campuses as well. I think they're, they're different situations. And it would go back to, I would go more to the specific policy language of just tightening up what exactly that language um, means and how you, can out, how you can make that language more, more precise in order that you're protecting young people on one hand, but also not harming other young people unintentionally on the other hand. Senator Lang has a supplementary, I think, Senator Wallace. Are you willing to let him have his supplementary? Sir, just, uh, I wanted just to uh, pursue the uh, point that Ms. Anderson made about the uh, police uh, dog and the, uh, yes. and the school. I mean, that uh, particular school, uh, just for the record, had undergone a lot of problems, and the, the police dog didn't just arrive overnight. It was the consequences of some known drug trafficking that was taking place, drugs being taken by students. Uh, in a very young setting, and that's why uh, it was acquired, just so you're, so, you, so you're aware of that. That wasn't a supplementary question, but we'll take it as a point of information. It wasn't. <laughs> Senator Wallace. Ms. Lyons, your, uh, just your point, and I understand why you make it, you distinguish between junior high, uh, high school, and university. You put universities into another category, and I... Mm -hmm. I won't debate that with you. I, I think I understand why you say that. The only comment I, I would make to you, and I, and I make this as a, as a parent, mm -hmm. uh, I don't distinguish the difference. I don't distinguish it. Uh, no, no. I think it's an important <laughs> statement to make, and uh, it's all one of perception. But I, I, I make that comment too. If you want to comment on that, that's fine. But as a parent, uh, I, I would not distinguish between them. Well, yeah, and. It's, I feel like I'm saying the same things over and over. It's not, uh, I'm not advocating, I'm not sitting here advocating that you, let's put drug dealers at, on campuses, whether they're universities or, or elementary schools or what have you. I'm, you know, looking at a policy document and trying to curtail some perhaps unintended consequences to young people who are our membership, who are, you know, sort of under 25. Yeah. We're trying to be balanced to it. I, yeah. And we thank you for your comments, for sure. Yeah. Thank you. There are times when we turn more to dialogue than to standard question and answer format, and sometimes it is useful. Uh, Senator Joyal, followed by Senator Baker. Chair, yeah, welcome. Uh, my first question to Ms. Anderson. Um, in, the, uh, in the school that your daughter attended, in your, uh, in, uh, according to your information, was there any uh, program or any information shared uh, with students? Uh, because I understand being 17, she would have been probably in a high school. Uh, 
Uh, is there any leaflet that you know students receive from the direction uh, each year to remind them regularly that you know th those are not uh, innocuous uh, products that they, they could be very damageable, uh, especially that, like it happens to your daughter with that allergy and so on. Uh, so. To your knowledge, was there any kind of such a program in the school she attended in the past? Yes. Yes, there was. Um, the school that she um, attended, um, it was, uh, the two schools actually, the elementary and the high school that she attended, um, very much had family values as a basis of their education. So, you know, yes, they talked about drugs. Yes, they talked about parenting. They talked about what it was like to be a good citizen. They actually role modeled that by taking the children out and doing activities in our communities. Um, so, yes, this, the school that she went to definitely did offer those kind of programs. So, in other words, they were, they were prevention uh, initiative. Yes. Uh, implemented by the educators uh, to, to, to that community especially and that you, in your opinion are they sufficient or is there more than can be done at that level of prevention because you focus mainly of course on once it happens you know there are consequences and I can understand that yep. but I'm also about the prevention side of it because we've heard earlier on that there is an increase, uh, a large increase of consumption among the youth. So that there's something that we do that, or we don't do that is certainly not effective or that we're missing since it seems that even though there are programs, it doesn't seem that we have the results of those programs uh, there. Um, when she was in school, she definitely did not like the idea of drugs. Um, it's when she left school she didn't have that extra support um, and again you know she kind of left school she moved out of the house she changed her job all within a short period of time of meeting this fellow so uh, the support that she had from the teachers in school plus the family support that she had there was a fracture there mm -hmm. you know there was a wedge put between mm -hmm. her and her support systems mm -hmm. um, so I think that I think there's definitely a role for schools to play in this, most definitely. Um, are they giving too much or not enough information? That I I don't know that I can answer that because honestly I don't think I have enough information, and it seems from just a little bit of looking around that I've done in the last little while that. You know, as, as soon as one drug is uh, caught, there's something new already being made and distributed before that one is actually through and said, you know, it's, it's no good for you. Um, so how do you keep that up in the schools? I don't know. Um, awareness is definitely a huge thing, you know. If you take a mixture of drugs, yeah, it could kill you. And, you know, in Chelsea's case, it was within the first couple of times of a, a try. I mean... We all do really dumb things. We've all made really dumb mistakes. But in situations like this, I feel that a mistake like this, well, it obviously ended a life. It's, it's a mistake. It was a momentary thought that I might be invincible or, you know, um, somebody else did it, so I'm going to be fine because they're fine. And that's the kind of thought process I think we need to... Um, really look at like it's it's not fine. Mm -hmm. you know. mm -hmm.